This is lightning detector, low signal amplifier and Arduino digital to analog converter connected to computer and AMA says PC software. Another strike, bigger and on blizzard tongue. Again real time strike and we will wait on blizzard tongue. Real time lightning strike and after few seconds on blizzard tongue. This project is sponsored by Altium Designer, which is one of the best PCB design software in the world. By using the software you can make circuit diagrams very easily. Also you can design your own professional PCBs. Altium is now included with Altium 365 in one license. With Altium 365 you can share your designs on the web and get feedback to your designs. Visit Octopart.com as a best electronic component site. Octopart gives you the most affordable data by specifications, data sheets, CAD models, etc. Hello, a lightning detector is a device or system designed to detect the presence of lightning discharge in the atmosphere. It's used to monitor and provide warnings about thunderstorms and lighting activity in a specific area. Lightning detectors work, work by detecting an ele the electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, produced by lightning strikes. Recently in one of my videos I described the creation of a simple lightning detector that uses a sound card fro from a PC to record the events of the last 10 minutes. This time I will use the same device, but now I will add some components so that the atmosphere can be monitored 24 hours a day. Now let's describe the hardware part of the device. The first board is actually the detector and its construction and properties are described in the previous video, so we won't dwell on it now. Uh, the other board consists of a weak signal amplifier module that has a gain of up to 10,000 times and cost less than a dollar. Of course, instead of this module, uh, we can make our own signal amplifier with, opera with operational amplifier integrated circuit. The other part is the Arduino Nano Microcontroller, which in this case has the function of an analog to digital converter adjusting the signal to be compatible with the PC software. For this purpose, the Nerd AQ2 code is uploaded to Arduino. Nerd AQ is a data acquisition system developed at New England Research to support Slinky-based seismometers in schools. The DAQ is built around an Arduino and stream 16-bit 16 16 oversampled values to a USB port. The data are sampled at about 18 samples per second. Arduino code is provided for unrestricted use and are also and are available at given web address. To record the data, we used an application on PC called Amasays from IRIS, the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology. These are free but relatively old applications and hard to find online, so you can download them directly from the links provided below. Uh, this combination of Arduino with NerdAQ2 code and Amasay software is a great tool for 24-7 monitoring of almost any analog signal. In the following, briefly about the installation of the Arduino and the functions of the Amasay application. Installing the code on the Arduino follows a st standard procedure. In Arduino ID, in Tools, we select Arduino Nano board and corresponding COM port, in our case that is COM, COM port 8. Then we go to open and locate the folder with the NERD AQ software. And select, select NERD AQ PDE file. Now we press the upload button. 
and when it's done, the part with the Arduino is finished. Now the code is uploaded to Arduino. Now we install Amasis software. We started the software. And go to settings, this station, and enter the name and latitude and longitude of the place. Next, in the settings, go to COM port and set, uh, we enter the COM port to which the Arduino is connected. In my case, it is COM8. Then again in settings, uh, device, uh, we select setup K1. Next in set zero level, we need to enter 37200. Next we need to set filters. Uh, duration of one line of the graph and gain. For this purpose, we go to settings and helicorder. Horizontal, uh, horizontal, horizontal time limit represents the duration of one line of the graph. If we, if we select one hour, uh, then the whole graph contains data for the last 24 hours. Every single line is one hour. We adjust the gain value according to the amplitude of the signal. In my case, I set it to 300. Next, we need to set a low pass and high pass filter. First low pass filter uh, I set it to 0.05. This is cutoff period and 20 Hz cutoff frequency. And high pass filter, cutoff period 1 second and cutoff frequency 1 Hz. And that is it for now. We restart the software and the logging starts. Now COM port is detected. Uh, during the operation of the software, we can constantly change uh, all these settings. Uh, we can also zoom and analyze a specific time period from the graph. In addition to the basic ones, there are many more useful functions that you can find by analyzing the menu. The data from the previous period, period are located in folders. The 
by year, by month, by day, by clock. And in one and in one year, the size of the files does not does not exceed one gigabyte. And now let's see uh, how the system works in real storm conditions. First I will test the device uh, with electric lighter to simulate the lightning strikes. Uh, as we see, the close the lighter is, the greater the amplitude of the detected signal on the graph. As usual, the storm appeared during the period when I was testing the device for the first time and I wasn't quite ready to record, so I apologize for the poor quality of the following recordings. This is lightning detector, low signal amplifier and Arduino digital to analog converter connected to computer and AMASA's PC software. Every line lasts 10 minutes. Now I will try to track uh, lightning in real time. This is the real time curve. These are lightnings. Real time lightning strike and after a few seconds on blizzard tongue. Another strike, bigger, and on Blizzardung. Again real-time strike, and we will wait on Blizzardung. Yes. Two or three lightnings. And now we hear that lightnings. On this line we can see that it have many strikes last 20 minutes. Another real time strike. And on blizzard tongue. Now I will reduce the gain so only the stronger lightnings could be seen and the graph is clearer. This is a big lightning and on blitzer tongue. Now we hear that lightning. As we see, the storm is approaching and the lightnings on the chart is becoming more frequent. This is chart for about 
12 minutes. You can set the resolution maximum one hour per line. So now this is the 24 hours screen. One hour per, per line. As we see the storm on last 30 minutes, uh, very intensive. Now we see that the storm is moving away and the lightning on the chart is becoming less frequent. About 6-7 lightnings on 15 minutes. In order to have better visibility of the graph, we can change the gain value. Now we can see that for the last 20 minutes there were only a few lightning flashes in the rear. Now you can see uh, what the graph look 10 hours after last after last night's storm. These three large peaks uh, sh should be ignored as they are caused by restarting the application. And finally a short conclusion. This is a really simple but very functional system, the total cost of which does not exceed a few dollars, but it is therefore a powerful powerful tool for predicting and observing storms and it has a very significant practical application, especially in this particular period of global warming. We can use this way of lodging data in the future for uh, other types of analog signals, especially if they uh, appear impulsively with a very low frequency in a certain period.